Hey, welcome back. Let's uh, let's have a look at Death Ride Sol uh, Solano, 16th Panzer. Interesting stuff and fascinating stuff as well. I have really struggled with this set of rules, the setup, and uh, trying to cross-reference it to the Kursk rules, which are more complete and more robust and more detailed. And I think that's where a lot of effort has gone in. And it wasn't until, <laughs> it wasn't until about, oh, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes ago where things, things started to click for me in terms of the gameplay. And uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of little stuff going on here that you really need, a, a, and I'm not a huge fan of informational counters, but you need some counters here to kind of keep track of things so that you don't screw up. I, I, I could not fathom playing this game with, you know, uh, another two or three modules attached and going through one by one without popping some informational counters down to help you keep track of things. But I really feel like this game is designed for the guys and girls that want to do the massive con play of three modules and get maybe, you know, maybe half a dozen turns done or 10 turns or whatever it may be <clears throat> after they've spent a day or two setting it up because uh, the games tend to, as you can see here, we're, we're dealing with, uh, let me, before I go shoot my mouth off, I think it's 300 meters of hex here. So let's see what this says. And bear with me because I, I want to get into some, some of the cool things once we talk about some of the, the challenging things, but I need to talk, yeah, 330 meters of hex. And in, in this, uh, this game's an hour a turn. So 330, uh, what are we dealing with here? We're dealing with 30 hexes across. So, you know, not a lot of space, right? And, and we've got a couple hundred counters on the board here. It's, or a hundred counters on the board here. It's early. <laughs> In the battle, uh, the uh, counter counter count is going to double or triple. We'll we'll put uh, two, one, two, three more regiments for the Brit for the Americans on four. Uh, four if you count the um, Paris, and then oh shoot, I mean easily another hundred German counters. Uh, and I think at that point you're you're looking at uh, an extended amount of time to play a turn. And and here's why. But here's the good thing. And here's why people get excited about it. I think because there's a lot of interplay going on, and there's a lot of um, cool decision making that really kicks in from the get go. And the the choices you make about where you set up and uh, how you position your forces are going to matter. And uh, you're going to have to f allow for some doctrine, and you're going to have to allow for uh, the uh, the formation integrity. There's no penalties for not doing any of that stuff, but you're going to have to be thinking about it so that you get the m the biggest bang for your buck out of all these different units. So, so let's let's focus in on just this little section of the map here. In fact, I'm going to move the camera. And, uh, and and I'll I'll preface this by saying supply and command, uh, as far as I can tell, based on the Kursk rules and uh, the Salerno rules, pretty straightforward stuff. It's counting a number of hexes back to a HQ or to a maintenance unit or to a medical unit or to a uh, supply unit to allow you to take replacements and uh, be in supply and have the full effects of full supply and all that sort of stuff. It's very straightforward. So as long as you manage the hex counting business, you're in good shape and you shouldn't, shouldn't have any issues at all. Now there are add on modules for communications and air. And I mean, you can do sorty dog fights and all sorts of crazy stuff. And that's all in the curse modules. We're not doing any of that here. We are using all the optional rules. And uh, we're just trying to we're just trying to muddle through. So uh, one full turn in. Here's what's going on, and and here's why it's so very interesting. So 
these two lines roughly approximate where you're allowed to set up uh, north or south of, depending on what side you're on. And the idea here is that we're trying to prevent, uh, the Germans uh, are trying to prevent the capture of bridges. The Americans are trying to capture the bridges so they can push further north and east and west, as the case may be, and, uh, you know, go do stuff. Now, by, by electing to set this guy up back a little bit, I originally had him uh, in reserve mode, similar to this guy over here, which you can't see, it's, it's sort of roughly at the edge of the frame, but it's not important right now. And then I had uh, these guys here in uh, their dug in position with wire. And I had um, other guys in uh, with minefields, you can see over here, and then fortifications over here actually at one of the bridges, right? There's a bridge right there. And I was thinking, okay, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna set up behind these locations, and I'm not gonna try and defend this primary line, um, this starting line. Let's set back towards our, our where our, our key defensive areas are, and then the Americans, well, they, uh, you know, they've got these sort of boundaries for formations that roughly they need to adhere to, and it, it, it'll become somewhat relevant later uh there'll be some questions about whether or not i can fire outside of my boundaries but we're going to assume for the sake of uh gameplay that you can but let's come back up here so i, I chose to put this guy back here to uh, provide opportunity fire uh, so that i could start pounding on guys as they moved uh moved up to disable these uh wire things and then do some sort of close assault up here. So, so as we went through this exercise, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here. And hopefully I'll get this up in a decent resolution for you. So, so as I went through this exercise, I, uh, the first thing I did as the Americans was, and the Germans go first, but the Germans are basically, you know, really didn't do very much. They fired a couple of long range shots, had some modest success for those. And uh, it was then the Americans turn, they used their naval power and they put two suppressions, a red two suppression on here. And then they said, oh, okay, well, that's really cool. Let's, uh, and they did some other stuff over here with all their uh, uh, naval forces, which are quite significant. There are three, six, eight ships that uh, provide a lot of firepower. And so they, uh, they started moving guys up. And what they did was first up is they moved up one of these. Nope. Where is he? Nope. I think it was this guy, this guy here. So uh, the 751st uh, tank brigade advanced up to here. And the Germans said, whoa, 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 hang on. I'm going to have a shot at that. Their range is seven. Long range is seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, whoops. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I shot here, one hex behind him and missed. And then this guy here, this uh, AA gun said, oh, let me have a shot at that. Well, he has a firepower of six and a range of nine. He took a shot and uh and hit and put uh two hits on that guy he rolled a like a nine or something like that and um and in fact earlier on i had inflicted this step loss back one hex but in hindsight there's a rule in kursk that says that the tanks uh because of their speed of movement you apply a, a drm a malice <coughs> and so we we discarded that so uh, we we use that rule i think it makes sense it's hard to hit moving targets at range makes sense not sure i agree at short range but whatever um so this guy could fire one time at the unit that's moving and he fires and that's it and then this guy could fire one time upon moving these guys moving into the next hex and if they got two suppressions here. If I wanted to fire again, if I wanted to keep moving and say, oh, you know, let's press my luck and move another hex. If I had another unit over here that had not fired, 
I can fire again. So I'm guessing this guy here would be a great candidate. He could fire and shoot that guy at him, you know, here. And he could, uh, this tank here could then run the risk of taking another suppression. So just in this little microcosm, uh, I kind of feel like uh, Marco Wargamer here. I zoomed in on four counters. But uh, what, what, I, what, what happens here is you have these set of choices for this particular unit that's moving. How many times do I want to fire? How many units do I want to fire? What else do I want to fire at? And how, uh, for these guys, how much do I want to press my luck? Because once I get to the fifth sub suppression, whoops, I'm done. I'm dead. Gone, finished, eliminated, out of the game. And uh, every individual discrete uh, suppression for armor is a 10% reduction in capability and a 20% reduction if you're infantry. So very interesting. So... You've got to go. Oh, okay, can I can I can I deal with a ten percent reduction? Yeah, I probably can. Twenty percent. Oh, may not want to take more than that. So I'm going to stop here. Now, why do these guys have these OW counters on them? Well, that's really cool too. So these OW counters, Overwatch counters, uh, and so the, so before I get to that, what would have been cool is to have an op fire counter that I could put on top of this guy. And I believe they're in the curse game, right? So, you know, whatever. I feel like this is kind of like the freaking orphan module uh, that was kind of built. And then they went, oh, I'm going to do curse or something. And it's, it's been ignored for the time being. But maybe they'll uh, bring out, uh, you know, sell some cheap uh, counter sheets and let you uh, buy some up fire counters and fired counters and stuff like that. So you put up fire counter on this guy only for the duration of this guy's movement. And then you would take it off. Oh, so what I'm doing, I'm just cocking these guys. It's easier just to cock them and then and then straighten them back up and, and say, hey, yeah, I'm available. So these guys, Overwatch. With Overwatch as an armored unit, I can move quarter of my movement rate, uh, which is 20. So I can move five. So he can, <clears throat> excuse me, he moved five. Let's say he moved one, two, three, four, 40 here. So he was only going to be able to move one more hex. So if he had moved to there, uh, one more unit would have taken a shot at him. But if he moved to here, one, two, three, he would have been in uh, short range of this guy, but still in long range of this guy. And uh, you know the ranges matter because the ranges give you multipliers for your firepower. Right, yes, right. So, uh, and uh, when, you, when you do take a suppression, if you're infantry, unless you're elite, you have to stop. Or armor, you have, then, you have, then you can continue moving, right? So elite units and, and armored units can keep moving. And so this guy wanted to go into Overwatch. Well, what does Overwatch do? Overwatch says, as I move these other guys up, now that I'm in Overwatch, as I, as I move this guy up, I go, you know, out of frame here, one, two, three, four, move up to here, say, I, as these German chappies, decide to fire, the crowds go, hey, all right, the gates, let's hit this guy here and fire at him. Say, let's say he's there by himself, and I've got a firepower of six, versus a defense of 27. And I stopped there and I went, whoa, hang on, wait, 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 wait. How can an infantry unit have a defense of 27, yet an armored unit has a defense of just nine? How, what is going on here? And you have, that's where you have to kind of go to the tables and then you've got to look at the combat results and you've got to think about what's going on here. I'm taking you know, a high explosive round I'm firing at one, two, three, four, five. What's that? Uh, 1500 meters or thereabouts uh, and change. 1600 meters. And, uh, and I'm, I'm firing this HE at, at a uh, bunch of guys here who will be spread out. There's an undulating terrain uh, uh, to, to be taken into account. 
So I can see why it would be harder potentially to hit a spread out group of men than it would be to hit three or four tanks at range. So that was the first thing that struck me as unusual. But uh, when I'm firing with these guys, let me just double check this here, firing a soft target. Yeah, at, um, at short range, I'm gonna get a multiplier, but at long range, I'm not. But I will, and I will, and I'll even get a long range multiplier uh, with um, firing at uh, medium targets like these guys with with these guns. So it gives us this this kind of uh, feeling that infantry a little bit harder to kill in the undulating, cultivated, you know, land, rocky pasture lands, or whatever the case may be, uh, at range. Kind of makes sense but it's easier to hit these tanks at range just because you know they get a drm but they're moving but i can i can see them i can probably lead them and shoot them so i thought that was interesting even uh even when i look at that and i go okay you, I, whoa i just bumped the uh bumped the chart there sorry about that so let me put it back here even with a, a six a six factors attacking 27, that's gonna be uh, in the very lowest uh, quadrant uh, uh, column. So I'm gonna have a um, 0.25 is the lowest you can go with a fire. I'm only gonna have a 30% uh, chance of a hit on these guys. So now, do I wanna, do I wanna, uh, do I want to fire at these guys or not? Knowing that I have, now I have this overwatch unit sitting here, even though he has two suppressions, let's just say that life is, uh, that these weren't here, and he managed to get here without the suppressions. Well, now <clears throat> he can return fire against this unit. Pretty interesting. He shoots at this moving guy, this guy gets a chance to fire back, this guy, uh, the, then this guy keeps moving, he fires, he gets a chance to fire back. We've got this uh, wonderful interplay between units. And we haven't even got to assaults yet or anything else. Uh, here's the other thing that's really cool. In each uh, turn, as you're, um, as you're uh, afflicted by these suppressions, let's say in the German's turn, uh, they were shot and took uh, suppression. And then it becomes the Americans' turn. Well, let's say that, let's actually, let's say that this happened during the Americans' turn, because I think that's how it works. Uh, they got shot during the Americans' turn. At, at the time, what's it called? What's the exact phase called? It's called the unit suppression recovery phase, uh, rule 294. Uh, these are red at the moment. I get to flip this over in the American phase, even though it was just uh, just inflicted on me, I get to flip this over, this is how I understand it, and now in my ensuing German turn, I'll get to start recovering suppressions. And I recover at different rates depending on where you are, who you're adjacent to, and things of that nature. So it's either one or two, but uh, basically these guys would fully recover. So. Very interesting. Um, these, these two, so in fact, these two uh, hits here were inflicted by the Germans in opportunity fire. And then it was our turn. We were, we had the malice going against us the whole turn. Then we can say, oh, well, it's now it's the uh, recovery phase. I can now, this is green because it was flipped over in the German turn. I can now take that off. And this guy's down ready to rock and roll. Uh, next turn comes up. It's the 0500 turn. Germans go first always, which I find curious. But uh, nevertheless, that's the case. And they will then get to choose who they fire at uh, first. But I'll have these guys set up in Overwatch here. And they'll be able to respond in kind to any opportunity fire as these guys try and clear these uh, wire situations here and potentially attack this formation 
sitting here and uh, attempting to, uh, you know, kind of hold the line for the time being. So a really very interesting um, set of decisions that you get to make here that are fascinating. So I'm not going to waste too much more time here. I just want to give you a little, little feel for what's going on. We don't, I'll, I'll talk in detail at some point about uh, suppression effects in more detail, how fire combat works, how the fire power table works, and how assault works once I do one. We'll talk about the combat because that's kind of the meat of the game. Just as in the uh, Armored Knights, combat was the meat of the game despite its complexity or its, uh, its math-centric uh, modus operandi. Uh, I think this game is, is a lighter touch, which is good because we have a significant volume of counters to, uh, to deal with. All right, that's all I wanted to share. And shoot, 21 minutes, so there you go. Talk to you soon.